Good health is a state of a complete harmony of the body, mind, spirit and this comes with lots of discipline. On the Alive Health Show, we are poised to raise a generation of healthy people knowing good health is wealth. Make a date with Sandra Pento on the Live Health Show every Sunday at 5 p.m. and it repeats on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. A Live Health Show. Your health, your wealth. All right, good evening, you're welcome to Hill TV. This is a live health talk show. My name is Sandra Bento, and you are being reminded that live health talk show is proudly supported by Prophetic Hill Chapel with our man of God, Prophet Nigel Gazy. Now, certain children are born with defect, but there is a challenge, and then uh, we all believe that every child being born is special whether we defect or not, and then they, they do have special abilities. That is why today we are going to talk about certain anomalies that, are being, are being, that people are being born with. And today I have with me here a doctor who is going to discuss with us about some of these defects and how we can go about them. My name is Sandra Bento. Let's go for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue. Good health is a state of a complete harmony of the body, mind, spirit and this comes with lots of discipline. On the Alive Health Show, we are poised to raise a generation of healthy people knowing good health is wealth. Make a date with Sandra Bento on the Live Health Show every Sunday at 5 p.m. and it repeats on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Alive Health Show, your health, your wealth. All right, here, welcome back. Uh, we are discussing plastic surgery related congenital anomalies. And I have with me here Dr. Abrakwa Yanshra. You're welcome, Doctor. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much for making up for the show. And I hope everybody is fine, the family. Sure, you're welcome. Okay. So uh, we've, we've heard about certain cases that certain children are being born with. Some of the children are born, are born with some defects or anomalies and then it could alter their looks some of them might look differently some of them might even not have certain parts of their body some of them might have multiple of certain parts of their bodies and then we want to know what these congenital anomalies are exactly what what are they and what causes these anomalies thank you very much sandra okay um as you introduced me, I'm Dr. Kwame Abrokwayanshra, a consultant plastic surgeon. Okay. Some babies are not fortunate to be born with certain defects or congenital anomalies. Congenital means they are born with the problem. And there are so many of them, but because I'm a plastic surgeon, we restrict ourselves to plastic surgery conditions. And uh, some of the conditions manifest immediately you are born. There are some that occur when you are growing, somewhere around 12, when you are reaching puberty. I'll mention just one of the, those conditions. Okay. So some of the common ones we encounter is a cleft lip and palate, um, macrostomia, which is related to the cleft lip and palate. Okay. And then we also have extra digits. A child may be born with more than uh, five, normal five fingers or five toes. And then you may also have a situation where the fingers 
are fused together and they are not separate. And that one we call, with our big word, <laughs> syndactyly. Syn means together. together. Dactyly means digits. So digits fused together as syndactyly. And then we may also have uh, in the males, their genitals may not be fully formed, complete. And when they urinate, the urine is expected to come to the tip of the male genital, but it can occur anywhere between the, the base from where it is attached to the body up to uh, before the tip. We call that one hypocedia. And then I mentioned that some conditions may not show early, like uh, related puberty, like the ladies with very huge big breasts, and which may disturb their physical activity. We call that one memory hyperplasia. So these are just few of the conditions, the common ones we encounter. Okay. And we want to know what causes some of these conditions, as in if a woman is pregnant, what are some of the factors that could cause these anomalies? Okay. Now, when it comes to congenital abnormalities, okay. there, there are just a few that the causes are known, but majority, the causes are not known. But how they occur, we can explain that one. But if you have been pregnant before, your doctor tells you, you shouldn't take medicine the first three months of the pregnancy or the first trimester. You know, pregnancy is divided into three stages of three months each. So the first three months is called the first trimester. This is the period where fertilization occur. The egg and the, the sperm meet, diffuse, and then multiplication continue. Because the things that happen in the body, whether in the baby or in a, a mature adult, it's all chemical reactions. Now, in chemical reaction, anything can break some of the processes, like drugs. So you are not to take medication in the period where the body is developing before the, all the parts are formed. Okay. By the end of the th third month, all the body parts are formed. Okay. That is why from that period onwards, your doctor can give you even the vitamins they take, you can start taking it from that period. Okay. There are other infections also that may affect it. For example, there's a type of measles that occur in adults, yeah. like German measles, can cause birth deformities. And also, some uh, sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis. So, and in syphilis in particular, may cause um, you may be losing your, your pregnancies, miscarriages. So it's always good to have a good medical checkup before even you commit to take seed. Okay. Uh, with the types of these anomalies, you mentioned cleft lips and palate. Yes. So I want to know more about it. Okay. What is it? What causes okay. cleft lip and palate? Oh. And how do we go about it? Now, uh, when we say cleft, cleft means there's a split okay. in a part of the body we are discussing with. So when we say cleft lip, there's a split in the lip, the, the, the mouth, the, the upper lip and the lower lip, they don't fuse, the upper lip don't fuse completely. So there's a, a gap. And how does this happen? Now, our face is not formed as a single solid mass. There are five different components that come together to they unite to form the face. Okay. As, now, okay, as it is being shown on the screen, uh, children living with cleft lips and palate. Now, uh, the, the left picture is actually a complication of children who develop this cleft lip, okay. especially when there is palate involvement. Their feeding is a bit complicated. So 
their, their parents or their mother needs to be educated so that they are fed well. But we met this child, and I believe it was an attempt to end the child. By starving this child, then he will just die because cleft lip in particular, if you are, everybody goes to hospital or give birth and expect a healthy looking baby, and then you, you get a child whose face is not complete. And if it is the first time, as a mother, you, 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 you are lost. Okay. And if you take this child to the family house, if you are not living alone with your, with your husband and children, and you go to the family house where you live, then there are all sorts of superstition around this problem. Some say it's a water child. Some say it is from the fetish. Others say it's a taboo, and this child cannot be seen in the house. So they end up killing them. And if you don't have the gut, then maybe you may stop feeding the, this child. But um, if, in the absence of all this, the child is not well fed, it can also result in this type of marasmus, malnutrition. Okay. Uh, so, so we didn't finish. Okay. So with this picture, as I was uh, saying, the face formed from five different components. We have one which we call medical frontonasa. It means the forehead and the nose. It is formed one piece. And then you have the upper jaw and the lower jaw. One side of the jaw, the, both the upper and the lower jaws, also have two components, two up, two down, making five. So in the process of the development, all these migrate towards the midline and fuse together. So any problem that will prevent complete fusion okay. result in these cleft conditions. All right. Uh, so we could move on to the second one, which we are going to talk about the, the macrostomia. Macrostomia yeah. is still part of the cleft, but this okay at the corner of the mouth, where it doesn't fuse at the point where it's supposed to fuse. It's wide so that the mouth gets wider. That's with maku. Okay. Stoma is the opening of the mouth. So wide opening mouth, which is also corrected. And then if we move to the fingers, the hand, we have some anomalies that occur on the hand. A common one is extra digit. They are supposed to have five fingers, but like Goliath and his giants, they have five, uh, six fingers and six toes. So it still happens today. Okay. So you may have six fingers, six toes, or sometimes it may just be just on one hand, six, either the little finger or the or the the thumb, okay. or in between it can occur. Okay. And normally, we use x-ray to decide which one is the good one, and then we take the bad one out through the x-ray. Now, the hand, as we know, uh, is not formed as one complete mass. Sorry, it's not formed like the finger, the, or the five fingers, but it formed as a solid mass like the part of the cell. And then, some processes go on what we describe as apoptosis. It means program cell death. The cells in those places are programmed to die off. Now, if there's failure in this process, then it will not go away. Or if there's excessive, if it's done excessively, then we will have the extra decades. If it fails, then you have what we call the syndactyly, where all the fingers are fused together. All of them can be fused together, or some of them can be fused together. It means the process okay at some place, and then okay at certain places as the apoptotic process. Okay. Then another one also is uh, what we call hypospadia. 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 Hypospadia okay in the male genitalia. The urine tract is expected to come to the tip of the genital, but those who have hypospadia, it doesn't okay at that place. Sometimes the, the head of the penis will be split so that the urine will come through either the corona where the ring is. 
the ring of the penis where it is. That's the corona. It will open under that one or between the corona and the attachment of the gender, anywhere along it, it can occur. Which means passing out of urine wouldn't be true there. So they find it difficult if some adult, he can't stand and pass you because you're wetting. So you have to sit like the ladies and then direct it into the port. And it has to be corrected. If you don't correct it, even uh, in an adult, it causes infertility because you can't deposit the sperm at the right place and therefore it can cause uh, infertility. But once it's corrected, he's just like any normal uh, person. And how do we correct some of these anomalies? Surgical. Surgical, yes. okay. And how long does it take to correct some of these? Because <clears throat> sometimes some children grow up and then we still see them in some of these bits. Meanwhile, they are still undergoing surgical procedures. Um, for example, if it's a cleft, just only the cleft lip, it's a one-day procedure. Okay. But if you have cleft lip and palate, normally we will do the lip first. Okay. But some mothers, once they see the lip done, then they think that's the end of the story.